we reached a major milestone in the pandemic this week. A COVID-19 vaccine moved beyond emergency use authorization and gained full FDA approval. This comes as more of us prepare to receive third doses. Today, I'm joined by Dr. John Swedenham, Associate Director for Clinical Affairs with UT Southwestern Simmons Cancer Center, and Dr. Ruben Arasaratnam, an infectious disease specialist. Thank you both for sharing your expertise with us. Dr. Swedenham, we'll begin with you. We learned throughout the pandemic that vaccinations are important for all people, but particularly important for those with weakened immune systems. Now that a third dose has been approved for both Pfizer and Moderna, tell us how you're thinking about caring for your patients. Why is that third shot so important? There are two main reasons the third shot is so important. Number one, we know that patients who are immunosuppressed for any reason, cancer patients being one example of that, are more likely to get COVID. And if they get COVID, they're more likely to get sick from it. A consequence of the underlying condition they have, many cancers make people's immune system more sluggish than it normally would be. Many of the treatments we use for cancers can affect the patient's ability for their immune system to respond to the vaccine itself. And we're now accumulating a lot of evidence that a third dose can really help to boost that sluggish immune response. So give patients who have a, a reduced immunity better protection against the virus. Dr. Arasaratnam, we're hearing two terms, booster dose and third dose. Are those interchangeable or is there something different about those? A booster dose refers to those that have actually had their primary series of vaccination mounted a response, but over time, the immunity wanes. That's a natural thing. And so the goal of a booster dose is actually to waken up the immune system. When we refer to immunocompromised patients, we're actually talking about additional doses, because the goal of the additional dose is actually to help them mount that initial response to vaccination. Dr. Sweetenham, many people don't know what the word immunocompromised means or immunocompetent. Tell us what that means in terms of uh, who is an immunocompromised person or patient and how they should be approaching thinking about the vaccine. An immunocompromised patient would be anyone where there's a reason that their immune system is just not responding to infections or to vaccines like it normally would. There are a number of examples that we can give you. I've already mentioned some cancers and the treatment of many different types of cancer makes the immune response that we all have a little sluggish. Another example would be patients who have undergone either solid organ or bone marrow transplants where drugs are given that actually deliberately suppress the immunity so that the transplant will take. Or those who are on, for example, very high dose steroids, there are a number of uh, folks who are taking big doses of steroids to control various conditions like autoimmune disease. Or all of those are situations where our immune response is just not as kind of brisk as it normally would be. And so those are groups of patients who are typically immune compromised. Dr. Arasaratnam, the Delta variant is causing the majority of the infections that we're seeing in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. How do you place the need for that third dose in immunocompromised patients in the, in the setting of what we're seeing in this accelerated transmission with the Delta variant? What this third dose um, offers um, is an additional uh, protection. But I also want to iterate that that's just one part of many aspects of protection. So immunocompromised patients should still continue to mask, um, um, keep their distance, avoid poorly uh, ventilated or crowded areas, and in particular, encourage those around them, friends and family, to get vaccinated. All these things together will go towards protecting, um, protecting themselves. I just right now, as a leader of our clinical cancer services at UT Southwestern, you see the broad population of cancer patients that we serve. Tell us what you're seeing in the pandemic in terms of the importance of being vaccinated for cancer patients, either those who have cancer or who've been treated for cancer recently. It's so important for anyone um, who has a diagnosis of cancer or has recently been treated with cancer to be vaccinated because the risk to these patients, either for getting the virus or for getting sick from the virus, we know that to be higher. And we know that the vaccine, even for those immunocompromised patients, and particularly if they get the third shot, 
we know that their chances of getting very sick from COVID are greatly reduced. So we're really emphasizing this, the importance of being vaccinated. These are really very uh, critical elements of uh, keeping our patient populations safe. Dr. Eris Rotten, we're hearing in the press about the at the end of September, a booster shot, a third dose being applied to all people, not just immunocompromised people. Tell us what you're hearing about that and what we should be thinking about as that information evolves. The Department of um, Health and Human Services has come out with a statement saying that they will be um, considering booster doses for this population towards the end of September and the fall. But the actual mechanics of who's going to get that is still being worked out by the Advisory Committee of Immunization Practices, and we really should have in the near future more information as to how that might roll out. Dr. S. Rottenham, flu season approaching, and many people who qualify for a booster dose are also uh, scheduled to get their flu vaccine. Can those be given at the same time, or should they be given separately? Yes, it is okay to get both the flu shot and your additional dose or booster at the same time. Um, it's just recommended that you just get them in uh, different arms, but uh, you can get them both at the same visit. Dr. Eris Rottenham, with the full FDA approval of the Pfizer vaccine this week, we're hearing different conversations around getting the vaccine and, uh, and people becoming more comfortable um, receiving it. For someone who's on the fence um, about receiving a COVID-19 vaccine, what would you say to them, knowing what we know now, specifically with the new information that we've uh, obtained in the last couple of weeks? What we're talking about now is very different from December when they received emergency use authorization. And what I would say is that we have large amounts of cumulative data showing the vaccines work, they're effective, they keep you out of hospital, um, they keep you from severe disease. And we have a really large body of evidence showing that they're safe with millions and millions and millions of people um, receiving vaccines that have really protected them from this viral illness. I wanna thank you both for being here today and for helping us understand the new information that's in this rapidly evolving landscape. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Until next episode, stay safe and stay healthy.